Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. For many years, a scientific controversy has been brewing far from the spotlight of mainstream media. How constant are physical constants? For decades, the scientific consensus has been that true constants, such as the speed of light and the gravitational force, remain unchanged over time. But in recent years, more and more evidence has challenged this assumption. A telling example is now posed by observed changes in supposedly constant radioactive decay rates in relation to solar flares. In 1904, Ernest Rutherford wrote the book, literally, on radioactive decay. In this book, he states, in no uncertain terms, the constancy of the rates of radioactive decay. This allegation was initially shown to be consistent with experiment, and so was generally accepted, not to be double-checked for another eight decades. It was only three decades ago that a rogue experimenter from Brookhaven National Labs published the results of a four-year study into the decay rates of silicon-32 and chlorine-36. His results were astonishing. He found a seasonal variation of about 0.1% in silicon and about 0.3% in chlorine, in addition to a monthly variation. Physicists of the day were not amused. How could radioactive decay rates, long known to be constants, possibly vary? At present, physics has no mechanism for radioactive decay. It's just a probabilistic theory. And very early in the piece, when Ernest Rutherford said the decay rates appear to be constant, this was taken as a license for geologists in particular, who'd been looking for means to date the age of the Earth, to suddenly register geology as a hard science instead of a descriptive science like geography. And ever since that time, any anomalies in decay rates and so on have tended to be swept aside. The Brookhaven National Labs report caused a small yet intense splash at the time, but discussion on the topic ceased for the next 12 years and they were largely forgotten. In 1998, the PTB in Germany broke the silence by announcing the results of a 15-year study. Seasonal and monthly variation was confirmed in radium-226. Only three years later, Falkenberg announced a seasonal 0.37% variation in hydrogen-3. As if the announcement of annual and monthly cycles weren't enough, nature had yet another surprise in store for a pair of Purdue researchers. While searching for new methods of random number generation via nuclear decay, Jenkins and Fishback recorded three drops of manganese-54 counts of about 0.1%, corresponding with the three December 2006 solar flares. One of the effects that was discovered was on the night side of the Earth, the radioactive decay decreased roughly a day before a flare appeared on the sun. And this effect was noted a number of times. So it was reproducible. The question then was, how do we get an effect happening on the other side of the Earth, on the night side of the Earth, away from the sun, being registered through the Earth? The Purdue researchers who discovered this correlation initially tried to avoid speculating about this problem and published just the correlation, but their submission was rejected on the grounds that there was no known mechanism for radioactive decay counts to decrease in anticipation of a solar flare. Being forced to come up with a mechanism, they were later able to publish a paper where they suggest that a massive increase in solar neutrino production prior to the flare is responsible for the decreased counts. The reasoning is that the neutrino weakly interacts and beta decay is via the weak force. Unfortunately for that theory, it was already established in 1998 that variation is present in substances which alpha decay, which is via the strong force. Neutrinos can't be the effector. So are there better explanations to be had in an electric universe? The point is that all matter is connected in the universe. All of this suggests that it is much simpler than the neutrinos. It is this direct connection between all matter in the universe. And if quantum theory is telling us anything at all, it's telling us that it's due to resonant effects in matter, so that the atoms that are disturbed on the sun leading up to a solar flare 
that disturbance, that change in the resonance of those atoms is available to radioactive atoms on Earth. In other words, this direct connection can invoke a change in decay rate. And this appears to be what's going on. And when it comes to quantum resonance effects, it also suggests, and this has been uh, borne out by some experiments which have been forgotten about, and that is that uh, low-frequency electromagnetic resonances would induce changes in radioactive decay. So what we're looking at there is being able to influence the dance of the nucleus, if you like, by sending in a signal which beats with that nucleus. And in the process, can either increase the instability, that is, increase the radioactive decay rate, or slow it down, depending on the interaction. It does give us the opportunity of thinking about getting rid of radioactive waste in a more sensible and simple fashion than trying to bury it. This means many things to science. It means that quantum theory must look for a cause. You cannot just have a, a theory which relies on probabilistic ideas. This is one of the things that Einstein hated about quantum mechanics. And he said, God doesn't play dice probability is not involved, there must be a direct cause and effect which is related to the electrical structure of matter. And this electrical structure of matter is involved in radioactive decay, it's involved in gravity, and so answering these questions from that point of view, I think will uncover a whole new era in physics. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to Thunderbolts.info.